my last video, I covered the following things, and um, and those things are like basics of NoSQL database, difference between SQL and NoSQL, and then why we choose DynamoDB. I will put the link of that video here. Now let's start the DynamoDB concept here. So just like SQL, also we are starting like what is our the I mean mean minimum entity which is uh, considered as a table and in table we have a rows and columns in similar form DynamoDB can also have tables items and attributes just like they have table rows and columns right in DynamoDB a table is a collection of data similar to how you would think of a table in SQL database however it is schema less meaning you don't define columns or data types when you create the table instead you only specify the primary key now in, in SQL DB we have a row here we can consider as equivalent to row as in called item so an item in Dynamo DB is equivalent to a row in SQL it represents a single row of a data okay each item is defined by unique primary key now in SQL we have a columns here we have a attribute so attributes in Dynamo DB are similar to column in a relational database they represent the data element that you associate with each item such as just an example you can consider as like name is address so an item can have one or more attributes right just like in a SQL also we have a row and inside the row we have a multiple columns so same in the same way uh, we have a table inside table we have a multiple items and each item have one or more attributes I hope until now you are clear how table items and attributes understood inside the dynamo db let's move on okay so let's discuss now the next important point here which is primary key so in NoSQL, primary key is constituted with two two component which is called partition key and sort key let's try to understand partition key first this is the main way dynamo db distributes data across multiple nodes DynamoDB uses the partition keys value to determine the partition physical storage internal to DynamoDB where the item will be stored. No two item can have the same partition key value. The next part which I already told you is called sort key. Sometimes it is referred as a range key. So sort key or range keys these are interchangeable, interchangeable words. The sort key allows sequence of items to be efficiently queried such as all items with the same partition key sorted by the sort key value. When used in combination with partition key, this forms a composite primary key, allowing for much more intricate query patterns. So that's why uh, usually in real, I mean, real project, you need a composite primary key concept where you have a partition key and sort key. And by using these two factors, you can create different kinds of uh, filters or arrangement of your data. Okay, so that will make more uh, usable to your NoSQL DB concept. Okay, let's move on to next concept. So in a sense, like I can summarize now, understanding these fundamental components of DynamoDB is crucial for designing efficient and scalable data structures. Properly utilized primary keys and secondary indexes can greatly improve the speed, efficiency of data retrieval operation in DynamoDB. So these are the fundamentals of course, this is not at expert level, but it is like briefly to understand at least what kind of features available with DynamoDB and how you can design your data structure so that it will it will solve your requirement. And this is at very basic level. When we proceed with examples, then we get more clarity. For now, you just understand tables, items, attributes. Then you also understand what is the meaning of primary key what is partition key, how sort key and partition key together work as a primary key, how you can create composite primary key. Then we also understood what is the meaning of secondary index, how this local secondary index and global secondary index works, right? So all these we cleared in this video. I hope you liked it. Let's move to the next concept in, under the DynamoDB in the next video, next segment of video, okay? Thank you. Thank you for completing this video. And I hope that you definitely have learned something which will help you in your system design interview. Hope to see you in next video with new concepts and skills needed for the system design interview. By then, keep learning, keep improving and keep sharing your knowledge.